Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. We're going to review how to multiply fractions. Again, I know that you've been exposed to this before, but we're going to, to jump into it and make sure that everything's clear in your head before you go back into the algebra. What if you had the fraction 1 half multiplied by 5 sevenths? How do you do that? Well, we've been spending a lot of time with adding and subtracting fractions recently, and so you might think that you have to get some kind of common denominator. The good news is, for multiplying and dividing fractions, you do not need to get this common denominator. In fact, that makes multiplying and dividing fractions a lot easier than adding and subtracting them. So don't even worry about a common denominator. It's very simple to multiply fractions. All you do, you multiply the numerators together. 1 times 5 will give you 5. And then separately, you multiply these denominators together, 2 times 7, and that's going to give you 14. So literally all you do, and that's, that's it because it's simplified. Um, you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottoms, and you simplify. That's all you have to do. So multiplying fractions is extremely easy to do. All right, what if you had um, 3 fourths times 1 half? Well, you multiply the tops. 3 times 1 is 3, so that's going to be on the top. And then you multiply the bottom. 4 times 2 is 8. And you ask yourself, is that simplified? And it is, so you're done. It's very, very simple. What if you had um, 3 fourths times 2 sixths? You multiply the top, 3 times 2 is going to give you 6 on the top, and then you multiply the bottom, 6 times 4 is 24, and you ask yourself, is this fully simplified? Now in this case it's not, because 6 20 fourths, I can divide the top by 6 and the bottom by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, 24 divided by 6 is 4, because 6 times 4 is 24, and so you have the answer of 1 fourth. That is the final answer to that problem. All right, now what if you had 15 twentieths times 2 thirds? No common denominator needed, nothing like that. You, all you do is you multiply 15 times 2 is going to give you 30, and on the bottom, 20 times 3 is 60, and you ask yourself, is this simplified? It's not simplified because 30 and 60, I can divide both by 30. And so on the top, 30 divided by 30 is 1. The bottom, 60 divided by 30 is 2. So it's going to be 1 half. That's going to be the final answer there. So, so far we've been multiplying fractions that are proper together. You know, smaller number over bigger number. And it works like this. I just want to show you really quickly that the same behavior happens if you start dealing with improper fractions. You don't have to deal with them any differently. A lot of students think, well, what do I do if it's this kind of fraction? What do I do if it's that kind of fraction? Well, the truth is you don't have to do anything differently, usually. So what if you had 4 thirds? That's an improper fraction. And I'm going to multiply that by 1 half. Same sort of thing. 4 times 1 gives me 4. 3 times 2 on the bottom gives me 6. And I ask myself, is this simplified? No, it's not, because I can take 4, 6. I can divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's 2 thirds. That is the final answer. We'll do another example of that. What if we had 7 halves? That's an improper fraction. Multiplied by 5 thirds, that's another improper fraction. So here we have two improper fractions multiplied together. All you do is multiply 7 times 5 and put that on the top, 35, and then 2 times 3 goes on the bottom, which is 6, so I have 35 over 6, and I ask myself, is that fully simplified? It's a simplified improper fraction, but if I wanted to, I could convert it to a mixed number. How many times will 6 go into 35? 6 times 5 is 30, which gives me a remainder of 5 going up to 35, and the denominator stays the same. So 5 and 5, 6. You can actually write either one of these answers down. These represent the same thing. 5 and 5, 6, um, or this looks a little bit like a 3, but it's a 5. 5 and 5, 6, or um, 35 divided by 6. Okay, what happens if you're going to do this sort of thing with mixed numbers? How do you multiply mixed numbers together, I guess is the question. For instance, what if you had one and a half uh, times two and two thirds? Now here you have a little bit of options. Some books will tell you to do it a little differently. What I want to tell you to do is when you're dealing with mixed numbers and multiplication, convert each of these mixed numbers into improper fractions, which I've already showed you how to do, and then multiply them. It's going to be a little bit easier than having these whole numbers out in front. So to convert this one, 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is going to give me 3, and this denominator here comes along for the ride. So the 2 comes there, it makes 3 halves. 
And then I'm multiplying that by this one here. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. That goes on top, and that denominator comes along for the ride, 8 thirds. And so now I can just multiply them. 3 times 8 is going to give me 24 on the top, and 2 times 3 is going to give me 6 on the bottom, and now 24 divided by 6, or when you do that division, is going to give you 4. So it turns out that when you take 1 and a half pies and multiply it times 2 and 2 thirds pies, you're actually going to get 4. So that's, that's uh, the way you handle that. Now let's do one final one, and we'll call it a day. What if we have 2 and 1 fifth multiplied by 2 and 1 third? I'm going to recommend that you change everything to improper. So let's change this one first. So what we're going to do now is we're going to convert this to a uh, improper fraction. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 gives me 11. And the denominator just stays the same, times, and then this one, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and that denominator stays the same. So now what do we do? We multiply the tops. So 11 times 7 is 77, and then 5 times 3 is 15. So you could circle this and say this was correct, but it's improper, so if you wanted to, you can um, uh, uh, convert it to a mixed number. So how many times will 15 go into 77? It'll go 5 times because 5 times 15 is 75. 75 to 77, the difference, the remainder is 2, and then you have the denominator stays the same. And if you wanted to check this, um, you could easily check it. 5 times 15 is going to be 75, plus 2 is 77. The denominator stays the same. So that is the final answer. So make sure you understand how to multiply fractions together. They're very, very, it's very simple. It's much easier to do this than to add them or subtract them. Just multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, simplify the results. And when we get on to the next section, we'll talk about reviewing how to divide fractions, and that is also very easy to do. So follow me on to the next section where we'll talk about dividing fractions right now.